What's up everyone, I'm Twisted and I'm finally doing another theory video on what champions will join Legends of Undera and what better time than now that we just got a new expansion. I've got a lot to share, so I divided these into two separate videos. The first one is the one you're watching. Here I'll discuss how many champions we'll see in this set as well as explore how Riot's other games might give us hints on what champions will join LOR. In the second part, I'll analyze each region separately and discuss what champions might join based on gameplay and hints made by the devs. Then I'll discuss how the narrative of Runeterra might give us an idea of what to expect in the game. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's first figure out how many champions will be in this expansion. And for that, let's look at what happened in the past. Foundations released with 24 champions, and the first 4 sets after that released each with a new champion for each region and a brand new region with enough champions to match the other regions. For example, Call of the Mountain released a champion for all regions present in Rising Tides and 6 new Targonian champions. So we got 11 new non-event champions, then 13, then 15 and finally 17. Set 6 stopped this trend by releasing 8 Runeterra champions instead of 9, for a total of 18 new non-event champions. Runeterra isn't a region, so that might be why. Taking event champions into consideration reveals that the 4 regions that got a champion during an event also became the ones with the most champions. Before Glory in Avori, each region had 9 champions except these 4 which had 10. Taking multi-region champions into consideration reveals that all regions had 10 champions, except the Shadow Isles, Targon and Shurima, which had 11, Bandle City which had 13 and Bilgewater which had 9. If this set doesn't reveal a new Bandle City champion, it might be because of its high number of champions, but I doubt this will be the case. Since the current set doesn't introduce a new region, it will likely have even fewer champions. If we count Jace, who was released during an event, the last two sets both had 18 total new champions. But this one will likely only have 10, one for each region, plus probably 3 new Runeterra champions. So 13 is the number of champions I'm expecting for this set, though I wouldn't be surprised to see less. Voiceovers can be a good indicator of whether we might see a champion join LOR soon or not. If a voice actor recently worked on the voice of a champion for a project like a League skin, they might have done voiceover work for LOR around the same time. Here are some examples of champions that got a new voiceover two years or less before they were released in LOR. Seraphine and Gwen were released in League, Master E, Evelyn, Seth and Vayne got one or more skins that require voiceover and Ilawi was in Ruin King. There are also cases where content was released in both games so close that it's almost a guarantee that the voiceover was done around the same time. For example, Akshan, Star Guardian Kaiser and Nidalee. There are also examples of new voiceovers being released in LOR first before the same actors being heard in other games, like Udir with his rework, Varus with his voice update and Samira with her ultimate skin. Obviously, if a champion hasn't had their voice used recently, that doesn't mean they won't appear in the game. The last time we heard Aatrox, Kale or Rice was with the release of their reworks. And some champions, like Jin, got completely new actors for the role, not to mention champions that don't even require voiceovers like Rek'Sai and Bard. There's also the case where some champions share the same voice actor. For example, Camille and Samira are both voiced by the same actress. Some actors can even be heard as different characters in different games, making it even harder to keep track. Here's a list of champions that aren't in LOR but had their voice featured in a project released in the last two years. Keep in mind that some of these champions are very unlikely to show up in this set since their region already has a champion. You might have noticed that I've excluded new champions from this list. Of the last 20 new league champions, not counting Nefiri, 8 are already in the game. And from these 8, only 3 were released in league in the last 2 years, meaning most take a bit more time than that to be released in LOR. Here's a list showcasing how long it takes for champions to be released in LOR after being released in league. Viego, Action and Aphilius were all released during events, so the three of them are exceptions. And in case you're curious, Udir's rework came out 6 months after his LOR release. It seems that unless they were part of some event, newer League champions haven't gotten into LOR less than a year after they were released in League. 
It's common for multiple teams at Riot to work on similar projects around the same time and to collaborate, for example, Udyr and his rework, or Zeri and Neon, which perfectly segues into my next point. Riot is no stranger to big cross-game events. KDA in 2020, Sentinels of Light and Riot X Arcane in 2021, Star Garden in 2022, and Soul Fighter in 2023. But they also like to release related content in their games outside of their big events. Lunar Beast in 2021 and Spirit Blossom in 2022, for example, were also events where League of Legends, Legends of Runeterra and Wild Rift got new content based on the same team. And this doesn't just apply to cosmetics. For example, Belveth, Kassadin and Kaisa were all released in separate games around the same time. The narrative of Belveth is all over Kaisa's cards, and Kassadin's splash art was updated and now has a reference to Belveth's white creatures. Last year, Wild Rift had the Dark in Unleashed event, and LOR had the Dark in Saga expansions, and Nefiru was supposed to come out before Milieu, so League would also have something Dark in related. Sometimes it's not exactly at the same time that content is released, but close enough. Wild Rift and LOR have done this a lot. For example, Bad Blood and Empires of the Ascended, Path of Ascension and Call of the Mountain, Yordle Expedition and Beyond the Bandlewood, as well as many others. Wild Rift also has many references to LOR, while only now have some started to pop up in TFT. Here is a list of champions that were released in Wild Rift and Legends of Runeterra less than a year apart. And here are the most recent champions to join Wild Rift and not be in LOR yet. Keep in mind that just because a champion is still only present in League and not in Wild Rift, that doesn't make them less likely to join LOR. Many champions were released in LOR before Wild Rift and some of these even got into Wild Rift shortly after. Moving on to Riot Forge, besides Viego, which was released during the Sentinels of Light event, we're yet to see a champion release being tied to a Riot Forge game. I mean, Ziggs was released in LOR the same year that x -Tech Mayhem came out, and there were some references to LOR in that game, so maybe I should count him as well. Still, Silas, Warwick, Camille, Nunu and Willump could show up in this year's set. As far as we know, the remaining games won't be released this year, so there's no point mentioning them. And I also think that it's way too soon to mention Arcane. This concludes the first part of my two-part series on theories for the next Lord Champions. As you saw, this one was more focused on analyzing the data what champions were likely to join based on the work done by their voice actors or if they had joined Wild Rift recently. As I said, in the next part I will actually go into each region separately and discuss what champions are more likely to show up, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next one.